Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 159. Please turn to it. Page 159, problem number 14 is what we are about to solve. This problem that you see there, problem number 14 and number 13 for that matter, these two problems appear, these two exact same problems appeared on the exact same page number in the first edition of the revised GRE. We have already solved every single problem from the first edition of the revised GRE. We are just redoing them at a little bit of a faster pace. If you need to watch the same exact problem at a slower pace, in depth, a little bit of a, a little, little bit in, de in depth, you can always go and watch the original solution, which is which was done on day number 66. Today, as I said, we're going to do the same problem, but not probably in as much detail. We'll see. We are told that we have set S. We have, we have set S. What property do these elements, do the members of these sets uh, possess? Let's find out. We are told that it is a set. We are told that S is a set of all positive integers. They have to be positive and they have to be whole numbers such that such that n squared is a multiple of both both 8 and 36. Let's first understand that part. The Numbers that belong to these, this set must possess a certain characteristic and that characteristic is that if you were to take a square of, the, of any number that appears in set S, for example, for example, if you were to claim that 10 belongs to this set S, if you were to blank, uh, b b claim that 10 is in set S, then if you were to square it, we'll get 100. Is 100 a multiple? Is 100 a multiple of both 8 and 36? The answer is no. 100 does not divide evenly into 8, 100 does not divide evenly into 36, so 10 does not belong in set S. Our job is to locate all the numbers that belong to set S, such that if we were to square those numbers, they happen to be some multiple of 8 and 36. That's the first part we need to understand. Having understood that part, once we have figured out what those numbers are, once we have figured out what numbers belong to this set, then we have to answer the question, and the question is, which of the following, which of the following are divisors of every integer in set S? And the, and the answer choices are A, B, C, and D. Very first thing you should notice is that in the original problem in the book, if you have the book in front of you, which I hope that if you do, in the book it is not 8 and 36. In the book they give you 24 and 108. We'll, we'll do 24 and 108. We'll do the original, we'll do the question as it appears in the problem tomorrow. Today I want to do a simpler version of the same exact problem so that we understand how to solve it. Once we have understood and solved a simpler version, then tomorrow on your own, you can do the problem that appears in the book, and tomorrow you can watch the solution to the actual problem that appears in the book, which says not tw which says 24 and 108. Today we'll do a simpler version. Instead of 24, we have 8, and instead of 108, we have 36. And the answer choices are, for this particular problem, the answer choices are 4, 8, 12, and 24. Whatever we're going to do in this problem, the exact same solution, exact same logic, exact same uh, rationale will apply to the problem that you see in front of you there. Nothing has changed. It's just a, they just have a bigger num They just give you a bigger number just to be the pain in the derriere. That's all. So, the very first thing we need to understand here, the very first thing we need to understand here, are we already understood? We already understood uh, what, what what this what numbers are? What numbers we are looking for that belong to the set? We cannot just pick. Uh, we cannot just claim any old number. The number has to have a characteristic that if you were to square it, the square of that quantity will be a multiple of both eight and thirty-six. Let's begin our solution. Let's begin our solution here. If 
or better yet, this is we have to start the solution there. Let's erase this thing and let's begin the solution from the top. If n squared, we are told, is a multiple of both 8 and 24, 8 and 36 rather, then that implies that n squared must also, must also be a multiple of the least common multiplier, least common multiplier, least common multiplier of 8 and 36. Let's understand, let's, let's understand what that means here so far. For example, let me, let me give you a simpler example. For example, if we were to claim that 100 is a multiple of both 25 and 10. Well, that is true. 100 is a multiple of both 25 and 10. We can divide 100 by 25 evenly, and we can divide 100 by 10 evenly. So 100 is a multiple of both 25 and 10. And if that is true, which we know it is, then that must also imply, this must also imply that 100 must also, must also be a multiple of the least common multiplier of 25 and 10. If 100 is a multiple of 25 and 10, then it stands to reason that 100 must also be a multiple of the least common multiplier because this is something bigger than a least common multiplier. What's the least common multiplier of 25 and 10? 25 and 10, how do we find least common multiplier generally known as LCM? How do we find that? We look for prime factors. We cannot do two, we, can, we, two, we cannot divide 25 by two, we cannot divide 25 by three, let's do five. So we have five, 25 divided by five is five, and 25, uh, 10 divided by five is two. So the least common multiplier, the least common multiplier of 25 and 10, as you can see here, turns out to be five times five times two, five times five times two is 50. 50 is the least common multiplier, and therefore this implies that 100 must also be a multiple of 50. If 100 is a multiple of 25 and 10, if 100 is a multiple of 25 and 10, then 100 must also be a multiple of the least common multiplier. In other words, 25, or rather 50. It must also be a multiple of 50, which is 100 is 2 times 50. Or on the other hand, for example, if you were to claim that 1000 is a multiple, 1000 is a multiple of 25 and 10, which it is, then 1000 must also be a multiple of the least common multiplier of 25 and 10. Least common multiplier of 25 and 10 is 50. Therefore, 1000 must also be a multiplier, multiplier of 50. That's what we're claiming here. One more time. We know, we, we, are, we are told here that n squared is a multiple of both 8 and 36. Well, if n squared is a multiple of both 8 and 36, then n squared must also be a multiple of the least common multiplier of 36, uh, 8 and 36. Let's find out the least common multiplier of 8 and 36. Okay, watch what happens. So, 8 and 36, we're looking for prime factors. That's how we find the least common multiplier. We, look for, we start looking for prime factors. The first prime number is 2. So, if we divide both quantity by 2, we get 4, and we get uh, 18. We can go one more time, 2. We get 2, and we get 9. And then, of course, we're going to get... There you go. So the least common multiplier, actually we could have stopped here, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 9. The least common multiplier, least common multiplier of 8 and 36 turns out to be 8 times 9. 8 times 9 which is 72. Which is 72. In other words, n square has to be a multiple of 72. So let's find out what n square must be n squared has to be some multiple, some multiple of, of 2 times 2 times 2, uh, 2, 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. Watch what happens. Watch what happens here. Here, since this is a, 
this since this quantity represents a square of some number this is a perfect square that's what n square means this is a perfect square I can't spell perfect n squared is so called because it is perfect square if it is a perfect square then we must have squares here here's a square right there 2 times 2 is that's a perfect square we get 3 and 3 and this 2 must belong to this 2 so k must be 2 k must be 2 in other words in other words let's let's make it make it very simple let's make it very simple here we know that uh, n square has to be 2 times 2 we know n square has to be the smallest possible the smallest possible perfect square that we're looking for the smallest smallest possible perfect square that's, that's what n square means that can be evenly divided by 72 would have to be here is our 72 72 can be written as 8 times 9 well 8 9 is a perfect square that's fine how do we make 8 into a perfect square we need to multiply it by 2 because 8 times 2 is 16 so if you're going to multiply this quantity by 2 we have to multiply this quantity by 2 and hence we get 144 the smallest smallest n square that we just found the smallest one is 144 that's where the story begins that's where the story begins. The story on the top here. That's it. We are almost there. We are almost there. We have just found. We have just found the first element that belongs in the set. The set has consists of some numbers here, and that number, the very first one, would have to be twelve because we found that the smallest one is one forty-four. You see? So that's a perfect square. The next perfect square is going to be four times that amount. Four times forty-four, because four is a perfect square. The next next element that will belong to this set here because it has to it has to be a perfect square therefore if the first one is 12 square the next one is going to be 4 times 12 square in other words 2 times 4 or 24 or 2 times 12 rather 24 the next one is going to be 3 times 12 which is going to which is going to give us 9 times 144 and so on and so forth so on and so forth these are the n squares and these are the n's that's it we found our set that's it we're almost there we found our set we can answer the question now we can answer the question and the question simply is the question simply was <clears throat> let's see how what the question is says which of the following integers are divisors which of the following which of the following are the divisors which is another way of saying factors divisor is just a very fancy way very annoying way of saying factors which of the following are factors of every element of set s element just means members and the answer choices that are given to us are four four twelve Oh, sorry, four. I forget what answer choices I put down. Four, eight, four, eight, twelve, and twenty-four. Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. Now, we don't have to worry about. Uh, we don't have to worry about uh, looking. Uh, looking to see if these are factors of every single. Even though that's what the question says. The question says that which of the following are the factors of every single element in S even though it says every single element obviously we're not going to sit there and do every single element uh, for one very simple reason because this one goes, goes on forever this never ends we just have to look at the smallest one if these are the factors of 12 then they must also be factors of all the others that's all but the reverse is not true just because these are factors of all so these, these, these happens to be factor of some number that appears in the set that does not mean that these are also factors of the smallest one but if they are factors of the smallest number that appears in the set then they must also be the factors of all the others 
Do you understand the logic? That's all. So is 12 a factor of 12? Uh, is, is 4 a factor of 12? Of course it is. 4 is a factor of 12 because we can divide 12 into 4 evenly. If we divide 12 into 4, we get an integer. So that works. Is 8 a factor of 12? The answer is no. If you divide 12 by 8, it is not an integer. We do not get a whole number. Is 12 a factor of 12? Of course it is. 12 is a factor of 12 because we get an integer. That one works. How about 24? 24 is a tricky one you need to pay attention to. 24 is not a factor of 12. 24 is not a factor of 12. 12 is a factor of 24. 24 is not a factor of 12. 12 is a factor of 24. You can divide 24 by 12, but you can't divide 12 by 24 and get an, get an integer. 12, 24 is not a factor of every single element that appears here. 24, you see, this is, this is where you have to pay attention here. 24 is a factor of 24. 24 is a factor of 48. But 24 is not a factor of 12. 24 is not a factor of 36. You cannot divide 36 by 24 evenly. So that's why we only have to look at the smallest one. If it, the smallest one works, then all the others are going to work because they're just multiples of everything. So 4 is a factor of 12. And 12 is a factor of 12, therefore 4 and 12 must also be a factor of every single element that appears in the set. And therefore the answer is A and C. I will see you tomorrow where we'll do the exact same problem, but at a much faster pace and the original problem and, and, and we'll do the actual problem that they give us, which are uh, not 8 and 36, but the bigger number, uh, which are 24 and 108. What I want you to do in the meantime is that, having watched this video now, do the problem yourself with the 24 and 108. Follow the same logic, same step, and you should be able to do it. There is, there is not much in it. It just looks intimidating. It just looks difficult, but there is really not much into it once we understand what's going on. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.